from Seoul, Korea, and welcome to the GSL Codes. Tasteless and my nerd hetero wife partner is Artosis. How are you doing, man? Yeah, I am doing really well, Tasteless, and I'll be doing even better next week when the GSTL is back. Guys, check it out. The tickets are going on sale, and as of the 21st of January, you can watch the jobberest plays, the legends being born, GSL Open Seasons 1, 2, and 3. Yeah, it's actually pretty interesting to see uh, what StarCraft looked like when it first came out, how yeah. people played it, how much the game has evolved and improved. Yeah, you can see back when Clyde was the best player in the world but didn't win. Yep. You can go back, you can see how much we sucked back then compared to now. You can watch how Nesty is the worst player in Season 1 and yeah. the best player in Season 2. Nesty didn't make creep tumors in Season 1. Yeah. Um, he just like died instantly, like 2-0, and then the next season he didn't lose a game till the finals. Yeah. It's actually kind of weird. That was weird. That was the moment that history was made, but definitely check that out. It's, it's worth it. And, you know, I, I think the show, the show, this show, the GSL, has come a long way. It I think like any has. good show, starts out a little rocky and uh, White, slowly improves. I tell you, you have gotten just funnier and handsomer. Oh. I didn't think it was possible. Oh, you've gotten smarter and taller? Oh. How do you do it? High heels. All right. Yesterday's results, Genius crushed the group 2-0. to zero. Gotta watch his games. In fact, all the games here today were a lot of fun. Yeah, all the games are great, actually. DRG, yeah. second place. MVPSC, third place. I just got caught picking my nose. I'm like, picking my nose off camera. And JYP <laughs> at fourth place. Today's matchups, we have a live, formerly of TSL, Slayers Brown, a great Protoss up and coming. Oh my god, we're going through this so quick, I can't even read it. There's a live. Looking actually pretty scary right now. Yeah. Uh, looking pretty tough, pretty badass. Up next, for the Team Slayers, we have Brown, an amazing player, the only Protoss in this group. Um, he looks kind of like Charlie Brown. Yeah, I actually could pass that. And then we have I'm Happy, the second best Terran from the IM team. A great team but tier. Let me tell you, Artos, he's not happy. He's angry at nerds. He wants to kill him. Well, here's and someone that's always happy until he loses. It's Marine King. Marine King is, I think, one of the fan favorites here. He is oh, so certainly, solid. yeah. He's he's a beast, man. Still looking Known for his, for his first trading. GSL win. Yeah. Always getting second place. He Dude. trades bases like John trades Yu-Gi-Oh Yu -Oh cards. cards. There you go. Now, go to the winner predictions online, and you can see uh, there, uh, well, excuse me, you can see there, you can actually participate uh, in seeing who's going to, or who you think is going to move through this. I don't know why that was so hard for me to get out, but yeah. you, can, you can do it. <laughs> Well, here we go. It's going to be alive against Brown. Belshire Beach is the map. Terran versus Protoss, our only Protoss today, Slayers Brown. Can he defeat alive? He has some of the best Terran practice partners in the world from Slayers. We'll have to see. Only time will tell if Brown can get through here. I, I'm actually very curious about uh, this guy because I haven't seen much of him. Nobody really has. Yeah, but he's yeah, supposed yeah. to be very he just came solid. Up very quickly, but yeah, he's, he's quite good, man. I have watched every game of his that I have found, and uh, he's, he's a strong player. All right. Looks like we're getting right into this. This is one of our fastest intros ever, Joseph. It's yep. going to be Alive against Brown. Game number one here in today's GSL Codex. In the upper left starting location, we have our Terran player, one of three, formerly on the team TSL. He is Alive. Alive. And sometimes I feel like this player is kind of left in the shadows a little bit more compared to our other Terran players, but he's yeah. very good. Yeah, in certainly the, he's great. In the opposite corner of the map, we have our Protoss player from the Team Slayers, mentored by Slayers Boxer. His ID is... Slayers Brown. Slayers Brown became briefly known for his Protoss versus Zerg. It's got a really strong PVZ. People are really quite fond of it. He played some great matches uh, in his rise to Code S last season. Alive, on the other hand, just known overall for being a badass in the team league for TSL. And he did make a round of eight last season, which is really so good. You know, why, <laughs> why the color brown? I really want to know. Maybe he thinks he looks like Charlie Brown, man. Could be. Just of all the colors. Nothing against brown, but I mean... I can could, I could, I could see red, I can see green. All right, I, I'm going to ask you a question because people yeah. are hating on the color brown, you being one of these main haters. 
And I gotta ask you, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a picture in your head and you tell me what color it is. Think of your childhood a little bit, all right? Yeah. Think of the most comfy, somewhat broken reclining chair and or sofa. Oh yeah, it was brown actually. Yeah. Now like su suddenly brown is not such a bad color, is it? Uh, no, it's not that bad. I no, guess. it's actually, you know what? Did you not relax on that chair and or sofa and watch your Saturday morning cartoons with bacon rolled up in a paper towel? Uh, oh my god. What yeah. are you doing to me? <laughs> <laughs> childhood memories are flooding back right now. That's it. There you go, oh, Tasteless. Looks like he snuck the probe back here. Yes, he did. And, and now he'll see the expansion. Oh, my God. And he might even be able to slip into the main. If he slips into that main, it's going to be crazy. But Alive is looking for him with a rain right away, bro! Goodbye, and probe. Yep, the probe is going to be <gasps> dead. What? No, oh, my probe. Is he going to get out? Oh, my God. He might. No, he's not. Just barely going to be an intercept. Oh, my God. The probe makes it out. The, this is the luckiest probe in the world. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, guys, sometimes people think that wouldn't be such a big deal, but the truth is, actually, with the probe, uh, it's, that's one extra worker. When you think yep. about how many minerals one extra worker can bring in or how much longer you can control one Zelnaga watchtower, it is a pretty big deal. Starcraft is oh, oftentimes certainly. a game of a million little things you got to do to get that, a lead. That is correct. We were pointing a lot of that out yesterday, in fact. And, oh, a couple hidden gates. Looks like we probably will see some three gateway pressure. Not to all any. You know, he's just going to go ahead, pressure, and then expand. This is one of the um, older builds for BDT. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. This build actually has kind of fallen out. You know, we don't really see it all that often anymore. But that SCV did see the probe, so he may have some inkling of what's going on. Alive doing a very safe build right now. has gone up to three racks uh, before adding his two gas. He's made a bunker, so he should have enough to hold this off. But some damage could be done. All right, he's cranking out a ton of Marines right now. Note, he only has one SCD on the bottom of Vespin Gas Geyser. I didn't get a glimpse of uh, how many were on the upper one. Oh, he's actually... It looks like he's going to go ahead and warp in some Stalkers on the high ground and then do some Micro-In. You like Micro-In tastes? I like Micro-In. Yeah. I like Micro-Machines. Do you? I like Microwaves. I like, waves. I like Microchips. <laughs> oh, I like Microchips as well. All right, here we go. Timed out perfectly for when the pylon finishes. He goes into the main, warps in some Stalkers, and now Alive has... A pretty big problem. Yeah, he's going to have to use SCVs and Marines in tandem to take these out. Notice he leaves the Zealot so that more can be warped in. In the meantime, warping in a Nexus at home. Just dealing with what damage he can. Nice job by Brown right now. Almost taking out that depot so far. Killing off some SCVs. Nice sniping. A lot of lost mining time so far. Now he has to decide, do I target SCVs? Do I target Marines? What do I do here? And then oh. with these few Zealots over here. Oh, my God. This is being... Executed yeah. so brilliantly. Oh, the yeah. depot actually will burn down while well, it will be destroyed this way either way. That was a very cool choice by Alive to actually just fall back to his bunker all the way. That's a, a nice choice there. And this is not all in at all by no. our Protoss player. You know, this is he's expanding behind this. He's looking good behind this. He's getting an extra gas. And he's done a lot of damage. He's already killed off nine workers. Oh, my God. I didn't even know he got that many. But he's killed off nine SCVs. That's a huge number. Now, for the time being, Alive is going to have to figure out when can I get this expansion back. Uh, it's a tough position to be in. And he did do the right thing, as Artosa said, to actually um, fall back and make a second bunker. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, they don't want to give up their expansions no matter what, and it costs them the game. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Well, uh, Brown has made three sentries, so he can go ahead and force fill that choke very easily if need be. If he cuts that army in half one time, man, he's going to be able to walk home and just feel completely confident. Or even stay there, perhaps, yeah. and end up killing him. You know, it's just, he's in a great spot is what I'm trying to say, I guess, tasteless. Sometimes the, I have the thoughts where the words just No, that happens right. to me, too, sometimes, <laughs> where it's like, well, I want to put this in a really elegant way, but I guess I don't need to. Look at that. It's getting ready. This guy's trigger on the force field button. It's a hairpin trigger right there, Tasteless. Is his finger on that trigger? It's on that trigger, Tasteless. The finger's on the trigger that's on the button. That's this, good. The sentry is cocked and loaded. It's ready to spit some fire in the form of force fields. <laughs> and there, he decides to throw up those force fields, run away. If he had caught uh, Alive pushing out a little bit too much, he could have crushed him a little bit. But he knows that stim and combat shields are likely going to be finishing up soon. He's like, yeah. I'm and not pushing look, my lock. If you look at the uh, production tab, you can see stim is you know about... 
five, yeah. ten seconds away from finishing. And he can't tell exactly when that is. You know, those timings aren't that mapped out yet in this game. So he leaves at a time that he deems reasonable, and he's up ten supply right now, which is beautiful. He's got 43 probes, 28 SCVs. He's been mining from two bases for a while, and Alive just now relanding that command center. So ah, now getting hallucination oh. here. That's so smart because you know his robotics facility is, is uh, going to be late here with a three gateway rush like this. Mm -hmm. So might as well make some uh, hallucinated phoenixes and scout around the map. Yeah, he's getting charge, and to go with that, he's getting plus one armor for his zealots, and that is exactly the way you want to do it. If you're going to go one forge and uh, charge, you want to get that armor. This is just this is really well done, man. I really love the way Brown is playing here. A little bit different from what we normally see in the matchup currently, but still very effective, safe, strong, intelligent. Kind of like Tasteless. Oh, thank you. Except Tasteless is dangerous, not safe. No, I'm dangerous, man. Don't fall in love with Tasteless. It'd break your heart. Breaking nerd hearts. <laughs> Breaking nerd fingers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> A little bit of overkill for that Marauder. All right, add in some gateways now. Going up to seven gates. And he may just hit a timing attack. You know, charge and uh, the armor. A ton of Zealots. He is sending out some Phoenixes for scouting as well. This is a great build that we're seeing here, and it's not. It didn't just start out great, and now you know where does it go from here? I'm I'm watching this build steadily uh, progress as the game progresses. Yeah, and it's it's really nice. And well, he's scouted out basically everything that happens. He knows how much tech his opponent has. He hasn't seen the medevac on the side of the map, I don't believe. So uh, that drop could catch him off guard, but Brown already getting prepared for that. He has Zealots in the back of his main base, so he's already somewhat ready. Blink on the way. Plus one armor has finished, plus two on the way, as well as Templar Archives. Probably wants to get some Archons mixed in, if not High Templars themselves. All right. Karen's now moving out. Now what he wants to do is drop here and then attack the front. The pylon does oh, spot man. this, though. And Brown is in position. Look Even letting this. it get... Oh, beautifully done. Oh, barely doesn't get that medevac. All right, now he's going to go to the front. Will he be ready? Oh, man, this is actually very dangerous. Those have plus one on their armor, but alive with some good micro so far. Don't forget, he does have two medevacs with that army. All right, looks like the medevac that was damaged is now going to meet up with the other army in the front. A good choice. That yeah. damaged medevac, he cannot risk going back in with that. Meantime, Alive just continues to macro up off of the two bases. And it is time for Brown to move out, he's decided. Notice that he hasn't morphed all his High Templars into uh, Archons. He's going for Psy Storm. And the fact that Alive hasn't gotten up a Ghost Academy yet does not bode well for him when that Psy Storm does finish. All right, more barracks on the way. Ghost Academy just going down this moment. Yep, there it is. And he has the Engineering Bays now. Getting an Armory as well. Let's get those upgrades going while he takes his third base. Good play by Alive, I have to say. He's, he's playing very solidly. Despite the, the interruption in the early game, he has transitioned it well into that nicely timed third base. But this is a scary army for Brown, man. And if when that Psy Storm finishes, when that plus two armor finishes, it's going to be hard for Alive to hold off any sort of timings that Brown does. But at the same time, Brown taking a third base, he doesn't even have to kill him. He might just want to damage him a little bit before ghosts are out, which is fine. Yeah, once ghosts come out, it's a total game changer because suddenly it's about one or two of these very deadly units. You want to you have to avoid getting. Uh, it's okay to lose the shields. I mean, you could still win a battle, but to lose, like for instance, the sentry energy. Yeah. I mean, the sentries are just not useful if they do not have the force fields. Yeah. Drop is coming down. Notice that Brown just continually takes the watchtowers so that he sees everything coming, Alive. where it's coming from. Oh, and also these pot, the, uh, oh, the placement of the pylons. His pylons are beautiful, man. Yeah, this is a technique from StarCraft One that we didn't see used a lot, but it's uh, it's smart because look, you, the Terran will probably just drop to kill the pylon, and that's fine. But uh oh, never mind. Spend a bunch of that. probes. Yeah, exactly. Well, plus two armor is done. He has size storm. The ghosts are not out quite yet. They will be out very shortly. So this is a great timing for any attacks that Brown may want to do here. Oh, nice! He's just going to engage up at the ramp here. Oh, and he kills the ghosts off. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Beautiful play. Oh, my God. That's so good. He actually just force builds that. Now, uh, Alive will have to pick up. If it occurs to him, pick up with the medevacs and then drop on the other side of the force field. But it's not occurring to him. 
Well, now Alive finally can go up there. Some damage has been done, but Alive against basically no splash damage now. There's no side Storms left. Should be able to clean up this army, especially in the little choke point that Brown has created. But meanwhile, for. a drop over here uh, and taking out a pylon, turning that one into an Artos pylon in this case. Um, you know, the damage that's been traded here is not quite even, guys. There's been so yeah. much damage dealt to Alive. Uh, Brown is in great shape. He should have another army chrono boosted oh, man. out. Wait a minute. He has actually killed off 54 SCVs this game. Damn. What? Totally crazy. Uh, so Alive, his economy is hurting. And in the, I mean, I'm not sure if we showed it yet, but there have been four stalkers behind the other base of Alive behind that uh, planetary, like you were talking about the other day, Tasis. And they're running away now. Most of them will die, unfortunately. Now, the real question is going to be, can Brown uh, survive and hold this next attack? If Brown does, actually it looks like uh, Alive has deemed it that Brown would survive yes. that attack and then decides to back up because that would be the game ender Yeah, he if Alive lost that battle. He correctly deemed that, so uh, you're right. Alive right now, what does he have? He has a good army, and that's it. His army is better than his opponents, but if one really good side storm or two really good side storms land, he still could lose that army, so he has to be very careful. His upgrades are nice. Browns are nice as well. But economy-wise, uh, Brown is killing 75 probes to 27 SCBs right now. So Alive has to get something done with his army. Something tasteless. Yeah, there's not a lot of room for uh, maneuverability here from uh, Alive. You can see he's moving around the map trying to see if uh, he can get Brown out of position. Brown meets him on either side of the map. Nice storm. Uh, oh, but a really EMP. nice EMP here. Oh, man. He's Sick good. EMPs. More Psy Stormers coming oh. up, but oh, nice snipes. They do not have Psy Storm ready. Not enough energy, and Alive's army now paying huge dividends. Wow. One EMP saves the day for Alive. Uh, will you check our former Arctosis? Does Alive know about the expansion of the upper right? Uh, I will check for you, Tasis. Uh, he sees a pylon over there, or a cannon, rather, so, so he, he has some idea, yeah. yeah. And Brown looks like he barely will not hold this off. And that's just going to be probably too much lost here. You know, he's warping more High Templars, so if Alive gives him some time to gain energy, the game will go on. But as is Alive well ahead, and not a lot of units out for Brown. Most of his supply is caught up in probes. Wow. Talk about a comeback here. Oh, um, beautiful snipes on that High Templar that had enough for Psy Storm. Very weak army for Alive right now. It's all very red, so a couple Archon hits could end its, end its fight. He he knows that. He's targeted down the Archons, and wow, this game has really turned around, Artosis. Yes, it has. A very interesting game so far, Tasteless. As, uh, you know, Brown got a nice big lead, but then traded too much of his army for the huge economy of Alive. And while it's great to hurt economy, man, I mean, now Alive's army is just running havoc all over the map, and that is not something that Brown looks like he's going to be able to hold on to. Uh... I think this game is actually completely turned around, and it looks like uh, it will end in a loss uh, for Brown. Yeah. I mean, yeah, GG. there it is, GG. All right. So, very cool game. A lot can be learned from that. Yeah. You know, it was really cool to watch those moves uh, from Brown where he force field them off the army so he could run and kill all the SCBs. But he didn't do enough damage to the army itself. And Alive's army just became too strong hit that one EMP and was able to kill off everything that Brown had left. Too much killing of SCVs is basically what this game came down to. He killed nine in the beginning. Great. Perfect opening. Yeah, he was. Then he ended up sacrificing his entire army to get that kill count up to 54. Now, if he perhaps could have killed off with that particular army, let's say 20 SCVs, and then kill off a third of Alive's army, then suddenly he holds Alive's big counterattack. And then Brown ends up winning that game. But Brown just spending way too much of his army killing off economy there. Yeah, um, it was not a fair trade. There's very few moments where you can kind of get away with that. Yeah. That's something more that Zerk tends to do. They run all the Zerglings into the main. The army has to turn around and come back. Uh, but the reason why Zerk can do that is because they can produce so quickly. Yeah, and Zerk is pretty cheap, man. That was an expensive army use. Yeah, I mean, he lost sentries, yeah. lost Templars, Archons, Archons, Stalkers. I mean, he lost everything. He, you know, I think it was really a bad move of him to go into the main base with it. He went in between those barracks, and that was like an area that is a shooting range, Tasis. That is like shooting zealots in a barrel. It is. While they fall down Niagara Falls. Damn. Yeah. Ouch. Ouch. No, seriously. It, 
He should not have done that. He should have. It would actually would have been better if he, after force filling that, making the command center lift, targets down the command center, and then just engages that army. Yeah. That, to go back, that's what he probably should have done. We're going to the Entombed Valley. I love this map. Brown's choice. I like the choice. This map, it's very easy to get three bases on against Terran. And, well, any map that's easy to get three bases on, Protoss is going to like. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. getting that third base is oftentimes quite hard to stop drops on, to stop multi prong harassment, but it's all pretty clumped here. So, good choice by Brown. All right, get ready. Alive against Slayer's Brown, game number two. Slayer's Brown played perfectly until he made that one huge blunder in attacking into the main. If he plays uh, just as well this time and doesn't make any major mistakes, I think he can still be alive. Nice music.